Hello everyone, welcome to Omicron, the Nomad Soul. This is made by Quantic Dream, and I've long been a fan of theirs ever since I played Indigo Prophecy a long time ago. And of course, since Indigo Prophecy, they've made Heavy Rain, and more recently, most recently, they've released Beyond Two Souls. I find them to be a very fascinating company. They release such strange games. They're always strange, often messes, but they're always just interesting to play because they're so unique. So this is rewinding all the way to Omicron, which is their first game that they released in 1999. I've played it for a few hours. No, let's skip that video. If you stay in the mini too long, it plays something. Uh, so I've played it for a few hours, and I want to give my impressions on it. Overall impressions, it um, it is surprisingly consistent with the rest of the games they've released. It's strange, and it's fascinating, and it's actually quite interesting. And it really is completely and utterly insane. Very strange, Quantic Dream. I love them, though. It's actually got elements of adventure games, and FPS, and fighting games. I'm not kidding, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Want some more strangeness? Uh, okay, the soundtrack was apparently composed by David Bowie. Or at least he contributed quite a few songs. Not sure why, but there you go. Okay, so first thing I want to show is the beginning of the game. The very beginning. Just kind of the intro cutscene because of how freaking bizarre it is. It's so strange. And that pretty much sums up this entire game, but after the intro I'm also gonna... Uh, skip ahead to a section that shows a better slice of the different kinds of gameplay that it has. So let's begin. Good enough. I have many things to tell you, and very little time. My, my name is Kale. I come from a universe parallel to yours. My world needs your help. You're the only one who can save us. I succeeded in opening a breach between my world and yours. Through your computer, you can enter our world and help us. But in order to do this, you must transfer your soul into my body. Do you accept? Press any key to say yes. But hurry, there isn't much time. Awkward silence. <laughs> I burst out laughing when this first happened. Okay, there's about three things to mention here. First, the weird fact that the NPCs go into some strange dead stare when they're waiting for you to reply. You know, I'm thinking like, are you going to keep talking? Like, this is awkward. Are, are you going to keep talking? And then I realized, oh, I'm supposed to press something. Second thing I want to mention, it's got quite a few similarities to Indigo Prophecy. At least in the voice actors, because this guy is actually voiced by whoever voiced Lucas in Indigo Prophecy, and there's actually another voice actor. The same one who voiced Carla is also in this game. That's quite surprising. Also, another strange fact. You know how he says press any key to say yes, but hurry, there isn't much time? Well, for one, you have as much time as you damn well please, but... Secondly, you can't press any key. He said press any key, so the first thing I did was press space originally. Yeah. When he says any key, what he actually means is press enter. I knew I could count on you. Now, you must concentrate. Concentrating. Concentrating. You've done it. Now your soul occupies my body. This is the last time that we'll be able to speak together. Once you cross the breach, you'll be on your own. I will take over my body when you leave the game and hold your place for you until you return. Awkward silence. Oh, right, I'm supposed to press something. Please, I will press anything to stop your dead stare into my soul. Okay, I understand. That's it. You're ready. But remember, once you cross the breach, you're on your own. There's no saving and going back if you get into trouble. You are entering a real world. If you make mistakes, you'll just have to accept the consequences. Now, listen carefully. To begin your investigation, go first to my apartment. There's no more time to talk. You must cross the breach before it closes. Oh, and one more thing. 
Be careful with my body. It's the only one I've got. Oh, right. <clears throat> Okay, another fun fact. He says, there's no saving and going back. Um, yes, there is. There's a safe system and you can load it. Okay, so there's the really, really bizarre beginning. Now let's load into a time further in. I'm beaming myself into his body. It's very consortium-esque, I suppose, kind of. There's some sort of a story involving demons as well, but I guess we'll get to that. Yeah. Okay, so yes, this character, when I beam into his body, you come back and you basically don't remember what the hell has happened. You're kind of returning to normal life. You're basically a cop, it seems like. Like a detective or a cop or something of the sort. And everybody's like, where the hell were you? And you don't actually remember. So everybody kind of, you know, acts strange around you. He's like, what? Everybody's like, what the hell happened to you? And you don't really know what to say, other than you've encountered some strange things. And here I've come to have lunch with my wife or girlfriend. And by the way, in true Quantic Dream fashion, within five minutes of meeting your wife or girlfriend that uh, you don't actually recognize because you're actually just beamed into this person's body, uh, she is in her underwear and you can have sex with her. Yay, Quantic Dream! It seems to be their thing. Also in Quantic Dream style, by the way, you can use the toilets. I believe that has been in every single Quantic Dream game. From this one, to Indigo Prophecy, to Heavy Rain, to I'm assuming Beyond Two Souls, although I'm not sure. You can always use the toilets, and I love it. Disappointingly, I have been unsuccessful in using the showers. But you can't have everything. Alright, let's have lunch. You're about to witness more strangeness. I'm glad you could make it. I ordered your favorite dish, sham steak. Eat it before it gets cold. Awkward stare. Um, I think she's supposed to be eating. Right, I'm supposed to press enter. And also, oddly enough, the main character does not appear to be voiced, even though he was voiced in the introduction, and other major characters are voiced, but he's not. Like, it's really strange. Great, I'm starving. So, did you find out anything about what happened to you? She goes back to eating. <laughs> She's not even opening her mouth. What the hell? She doesn't even have a utensil or any food in her mouth. Or, or, or any, any, anywhere. Nothing. Just... Yeah. Hmm. Now I'm sure it's related to the case I was working on. Uh, so yeah, you're working on a case with someone else when the incident happened that you don't actually really remember. And what about Dan? Did you see him? Den was a guy I was working with. Den is dead. Tell us, do you believe in demons? You're not gonna tell me Den was killed by demons. That's absurd. Demons don't exist. And then she goes back to eating. I've already fought a demon. I know they exist. You seem so strange since you came back. It's as if you're not the same Kale I used to know. Then <laughs> she goes back to eating. <laughs> it's, re it's really strange. I've beamed into this guy's body, and I'm like, oh yeah, hi, I was gone for a couple days, and I don't know who I am anymore. I've kind of lost my memory because I'm kind of somebody else, and oh, by the way, I fought demons, and everybody around me is like, hmm, that's kind of strange. Get back to work. I'm not the same man, tell us. So, what happened about the murders? She doesn't even respond to that. <laughs> hmm. The case was classified confidential. That is the case we were working on before the incident happened. Me and Den. It looks like there are people who don't want you to know what happened on the night of your disappearance. You know, I really think you have to start over from scratch with the investigation you were working on with Den before you disappeared. You're right. I'll continue the investigation. Be careful, Kale. You may already know too much. I don't want to lose you again. Tell us. I have something important to tell you. I'm not... Agent Kale, Agent Kale 669, come in. 
Agent KO669 here. What's up? There's a holdup going on in the supermarket in your sector. Eight armed robbers have been reported. They may be hostages. Go immediately to 816 Zodir Street. Reinforcements are on the way. Over. Why do you have such a big chest? Anyway, okay, thank you, bye. Sorry, Talus, I've got to go. There's a holdup in progress. Here, take this talisman. You gave it to me before you disappeared. You said it would protect me. Now you might need it. And then she go, goes back to eating. <laughs> that dead stare. My god, that dead stare. Thanks. See you later. She's apparently very hungry. There's the talisman. Pew. I will say, for being 1999, it's the facial expressions, the amount of expressivity, is that a word? The amount of detail in the facial expressions is actually very surprising for 1999. Very impressive. As awkward as it is, it is impressive. So, even though there's an armed robbery in progress, let's faff about. Some more strangeness. The names of the food. Ziam Noddles. I don't know if that's a misspell or not. Kloops Beer. Droot Salad. And Sham... Steak? Is that actually how you spell steak? It doesn't look like it. Maybe it is, I'm not quite sure. Okay, we've got an armed robbery. Let's go deal with that. Let's save first. Just in case it all goes tits up. It's a lovely phrase, isn't it? Tits up. It just sounds funny. More strangeness about this game, by the way. I mentioned that it has three different kind of genres. It's got adventure game, it's got... FPS, and it's also got uh, fighting. Well, those three different genres, when those sections actually happen, all have three distinct control schemes that are not completely different, but pretty damn different. It's really weird. It's really weird. Quantic Dream has always been a company that has very strange controls. I mean, you remember Indigo Prophecy. Uh, well, I mean, you remember it if you played it. <laughs> um, Indigo Prophecy had really strange controls. Because you had these weird cutscenes where you had a sort of Simon Says color thing that you had to complete correctly to get through those those cutscenes. And then it also had kind of standard controls for when you're just walking around. It was really bizarre. And then, of course, you probably... I think most people know what's up with Heavy Rain. It's a pretty popular game. And that... You know, it's got all that... An incredible amount of context-sensitive stuff. All sorts of stuff. Everything you could possibly do with uh, a PlayStation 3 controller, they do. You know, shaking, tilting, and pressing, and holding, and tapping, and everything. It's, r I mean, the, the way you control Heavy Rain is very strange. It's one of the most novel things about it. Not necessarily a good thing, but it's certainly unique. And that is certainly the case here. So the basic controls for this sort of adventure game part, where you're just moving around, it's, it's basically like the Resident Evil tank controls, sort of. So if you can picture this, my... You can't use the mouse at all, really. My right hand is just on the cursor keys. So there's no strafing, you know, you can just turn left, turn right, and so on. My left hand is hovering around space for jump, and shift for sprint, which is what I'm pressing right now, and also tab, which opens up your little PDA thing here. So right hand moves you around, left hand does some of the extra stuff. There is mouse support in this game, by the way. In this adventure game mode, the only way you can actually use it is if you hold down the left mouse button. It allows you to look around. And that's it. You can't move while you're looking around, by the way. So it just allows you to go to a spot. Like, I want to look at these people eat. Hi. What are you eating there? Looks pixely. That looks like a giant bowl of snot. Ew. And that's it. So the mouse is essentially useless in the adventure game mode. However, in the FPS section, you actually pretty much have to use the mouse. So let's go show you that. And show you how the controls completely change for these different game modes. And let's just uh, forget about the fact that everybody has now died in the arm robbery because I was looking at the names of food. In fact, before going there, actually, look at the people on the street. You ever get the feeling that you kind of recognize people? Like everybody kind of looks the same? Oh, hi, John. How you doing? Oh, hi, John. How you doing? Oh, hi, Samantha. Hi, John. Hi, John. Hi, John. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Samantha. Hi, John. Get out of my way, stupid car. Yeah, stop for me. Hi, John. 
Samantha! Well, okay, actually, that one looks different. Yeah, there's like... Four character models. Almost everybody looks like clones. Yeah. It's strange. Okay, right, armed robbery. Um, let's deal with that. Not surprisingly, just like the controls for moving the character are pretty terrible, the controls for this are kind of bad too. Uh, alright, this is to call a cab. Let's go to the supermarket. Yeah. Yeah, so the supermarket's being held up. Let's call for a cab. Uh, I guess it's here. Usually it shows you a whole cutscene where you wait, it, it shows you the cab driving to your location, and then you have to get into it, and then you watch this cutscene to go to the location, but for some reason it was exceptionally fast. The cab was basically already there. Okay. We got a holdup to deal with. Let's do it. And here we go. Let me shoot some people. Let me shoot some perps, and then let me explain what the hell's going on. Okay. Let's hope nobody kills me for a second. Am I safe here? What the fuck? Why am I... What the hell? I just got like two FPS for a second. That was weird. Anyway. I mentioned previously, my right hand was on the cursor keys to move around, right? My left hand was on like space and shift. However, since this is now mouse controlled, all of a sudden, it's mouse controlled. Now my right hand is on the mouse, and my left hand is now controlling the cursor keys which move me. So before I was controlling my movement with my right hand, and now for this section I have to basically control it with my left hand. It's the most awkward, weird thing ever. It's so strange to actually change the hand that is controlling your character's movement. It's bizarre. And of course, your actual movement is totally different, because now you can actually strafe instead of turning with the tank controls that you had before. It's really strange. It just completely changes how you control your character. And now also in this FPS mode, by the way, right-click jumps instead of space. You know, in addition to space, it jumps. Like, what just, What the fuck is even going on? Anyway. All right, let's uh, save everybody. Also, I appear to be gliding around on the floor. And I have some sort of a weird robot hand. Also, why are, like, 20 people um, holding up a supermarket? Also, why did these 20 people that are holding up a supermarket decide to build box forts? Like, what in the hell? So, that's a health kit. Health kit that plays an incredibly loud sound for some reason. Like, why, why were they playing with boxes? It's not how you hold up a supermarket, and why would you need nine, nine people to hold up a supermarket? They seriously just played with the boxes. I think they just liked boxes. It's so bizarre. It's charmingly bizarre, though. It really is charming just how fucking insane this is. And the animations for this game, by the way, are also surprising. You know, Quantic Dream... Fuck off. Quantic Dream is always focused on, pr probably to their detriment, um, cinematicness. And, uh, no exception here. I mean, it's certainly not as cinematic as Indigo Prophecy or Heavy Rain, but they definitely put a lot of focus on the character animations and facial expressions and stuff like that. I'm guessing they motion captured this stuff. I think it maybe just shot a civilian or something. Oh well. Protect and serve. Well, serve at least. Stop playing with boxes, Jesus. You're too old for that stuff. The, the, the last of them is hiding in the underground warehouse. Don't let him get away. He's the most dangerous one of all. I'm just kidding. No one's too old to play with boxes. Seriously, play with boxes. It's fun. Okay. Oh, right. I need to switch control mode. Sorry. Right hand on the controls for that. Left hand. All right. Should probably pick this up. Let me absorb this into my being. My sneak is full. Oh. My sneak is... Uh, the sneak, by the way, is the name for this thing. 
It's my arm band object holder thing. All right. The game is about to show its third genre and also its third control scheme, the fighting game, where it also has different controls. When you're fighting, Q and W are used for, I think those are punches, they're two separate moves, and then A and S are used for kicks. And then the cursor keys are used for movement. However, the cursor keys, left and right will move you further or closer to the enemy because it's kind of like a side view, so right will move you closer to the enemy that's on the right, left will move you, you know, further away. And up and down suddenly become things like crouch and jump. Whereas, you know, here it just go forwards or back up. So they don't they don't completely change, but they mostly change from how you controlled before. So right hand on the cursor keys, left hand on Q, W, and A and S. There's some other fighting controls too that I'm just not familiar with because I haven't played the game enough. Uh yeah, I'm not quite sure what they are. But that's the basics. So here you go. The super boss, who's been he's the super boss of the fort. The box fort. And here we go. What the? I didn't get a chance to do anything. Fuck you. Are you serious? He actually might win. Oh shit. He actually might win. He's probably going to win. I have no idea how the fighting system really works in terms of, like, actually being good. Oh, okay. It's an opening. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, don't lose. Don't lose. That would be embarrassing. Okay. Whew, I just barely won. And he's glitching through the door. Okay, I win. Goodbye. Wait, hold on. There's something to pick up. Oh, right. I have no room, right? Mana potion. Meow. Yeah, I don't have room. I've never even used anything that takes mana. I didn't even know mana existed before that potion. But, okay. By the way, you can stand in the fire. Toasty. Oh, box fort in my way. Again, why did you need nine people to hold up a supermarket? A supermarket that apparently only has one person in it? Actually, no, I suppose it had, what, three? One guy in the beginning, the guy that talked to me, and then the guy that got shot in the back, possibly shot in the front by me. Okay, it's got a couple people. But they're not armed, so I don't see why you need nine armed robbers. Okay, okay, thank you. I think there's kind of a story explanation for it slightly, as I've seen in a second, but it's still bizarre. The police reinforcements still haven't come, and there were more than eight robbers involved in the holdup. It's strange that I was sent to this death trap unaccompanied. If they wanted to kill me, they couldn't have picked a better way. So yeah, I guess the idea is that it was a death trap intended to kill me, but still. Like, ten plus robbers playing with boxes holding up a supermarket? What? Okay. That shows you the bizarre FPS in the fighting sections. Let me show you some of the adventure game part. So let's just do some stuff. All right. There's something I need to do back at Security HQ. That's my my pad. Actually, no, it's not my pad. My apartment is a totally different place. It's my place of business. I found the best way to activate something is just to mash enter because sometimes it doesn't work the first time. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm going back to my place here. On the right? Yeah, okay. Wasn't quite sure if that was it. And... Uh, what I need to do at the moment is interview someone who's suspected to be a terrorist, basically. They're in the detention... No, no, there is something interesting there, you idiot. Nothing in particular. Use, use, use the thing, please. Thank you. Let's 
find the detention. There we go. Level 3 detention cells. Excuse me. Here it is. Excuse me. I have already interrogated Jen. I should make my report now. Oh, I didn't realize in this save that I had already interrogated her. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So yes, my boss, after coming back, uh, she's kind of pissed, you know, because I disappeared for a few days and told her that I didn't remember what happened. So she's kind of annoyed, and the first thing she sent me on was this job to talk to Jenna. Interrogator. Which I've apparently already done. So let me go give my report. Now, use the, the panel. The apparently invisible panel that exists somewhere. Let's go talk to Leah. Leah, who's voiced by the person who voiced Carla in Inigo Prophecy. Which one is her place? Is it this one? Yes, there she is. Alright, let's go give my report about my interrogation. By the way, my report is going to be that she seems innocent, even though I know she's guilty. Because why not? Who cares? Well, Agent Kale, do you think Jenna 712 is guilty? Oh, right. So to press enter. I genuinely forgot at that point. It's really awkward. It's like I keep expecting them to say something. It's like, uh-huh, and? And? Oh. Eh, I think she had nothing to do with the attack. She should be released. Goodbye. Right. We agree with you. You can go about your business. Oh, do me a favor. Get me a cup of coil. Dying of thirst. Oh, oh right. Uh, right, Captain. Yes, your captain wants you to get her a drink. Okay. I had to look up a walkthrough for this solution. So at this point in the story, let's look at my objectives. Mm, let's see. I'm not sure what the hell that's about, actually. Okay, so I was investigating a case with Den. When the incident happened. Den ended up killed, I ended up disappeared for a while. Came back a couple days later and don't remember what the hell happened. And... The, uh, files. Of the case that we were working on, which is obviously connected to what had happened to us, because it happened during the course of investigating that case. The case has been... Classified. As confidential. Which means I need to get to it. That's all the game told me. It's classified as confidential, right? I suspect this investigation is linked to the disappearance of investigating agent Kale. I absolutely must find a way to access this dossier. And that's it. So I was thinking, okay, how do I do that? I had no idea. No idea. I looked up a walkthrough, and it turns out this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to take a prescription that you have for sleeping pills back at your apartment, which I grabbed. You're supposed to take that to the pharmacy, which, by the way, does not show up on your list of possible locations to go with. From the taxi, you can see here, yeah, apartment, access to Kalisar, Jenna's apartment, security HQ, bar zone, access to Anekba. There's no pharmacy listed here. And the world is just like a gray smudge, so trying to find something is rather difficult. It's especially difficult when the game's font is practically unreadable. Look at this, resume game and quit game. The font is practically fucking unreadable in some cases. It makes it particularly hard because some of the signs are stylized in a similar fashion. Some of the signs for the stores. So yeah, not so great. So this pharmacy isn't even listed, it's bloody hard to find, but I found it thanks to the walkthrough. Go in, go into the um, pharmacy, use your prescription for sleeping pills, get the sleeping pills, and then your captain who wants you to get her a drink. Yes, wants you to get her a drink. So then guess what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to use the sleeping drug in the drink and poison your own captain and put her to sleep and steal her passcode and use that to continue the investigation. Absolutely insane. Just fucking insane. Alright, I've got the sleeping drug here. I don't believe I have the drink. She wants coil. I don't think it was there, was it? Chocovat bar. Let's just eat that, because I need room. And let's use a med kit, because I need room. Okay. I need the drink. So let's go play fetch quest for her, and then let's poison her. I'm gonna turn around so this asshole doesn't tell me that I don't know what to do with that. Durr. Which one? Okay, on this floor of the restroom... 
color of the room is tan. Thankfully it's color-coded, otherwise it'd be rather hard to find. I think that's orange. Yeah, this is tan. Or, kind of. Close enough. Whatever. A drinks distributor. Let's grab a cup of coil. Done. Now, let's use that on the sleeping drugs, and now we have a drugged cup of coil. Let's go poison my captain. That sounds like a brilliant idea, doesn't it? What better way to prove my innocence and get to the bottom of the case than poisoning someone? Nothing in particular. Use the panel. What? Oh, okay. Totally natural entrance. Here you go. Thanks. Dismissed. No, no thank you. I think I'll just watch you slowly drink it. Yes, it tastes great, doesn't it? How do you feel? Oh my. Again. She's asked for a drink. You've just brought her one and awkwardly stared at her as she drank it and then she passed out. You don't think she's going to make a connection there and kind of arrest you for poisoning her after she wakes up? Nope. Alright. So, got a nab or key card. Nothing interesting. I find the panel quite interesting. Actually, thank you. Okay, need to take it to the archive room, which is on level 3, coated green. Let's go ahead and use the badge on that thing. Okay. Uh, I guess I don't need to do all of these. Well, just in case I need it for like a... To unlock the quest. Let's see, number four. Okay, the one I, I think I really actually need for the main quest is the serial killings dossier. Okay. Uh, I don't need to go too in detail into it, but the important stuff here is that all the bodies were horribly mutilated and all the victims disappeared four days before their bodies were found. This is the case we were working on when I disappeared. This case about a lot of people getting... Well, serial killed, I suppose, or horribly mutilated by someone, or perhaps many things, I guess. Maybe the demons. The murder is extremely savage. No one ever sees the murderer come to, come to or leave the scene of the crime. The only motive seems to be a morbid pleasure in killing. An autopsy report on the latest victims has been requested from Zone 42 Morgue. Also, a certain Anissa 109, dancer at 9010, Kalasar Boulevard, is reported to have seen something on the occasion of the murder at Maya Leoa. So, two locations. I have the morgue to visit, and I also have the dancer to interview. That's the important part of that. So, let's go do the investigation. No oh, Jesus Christ. Ugh. Fucking hell, that scared me. I forgot the thing was there. And for some reason, it just told me no entry, even though I just... Entried? Ent entrailed? Anyway... What was I saying? Oh yes, let's go do some of the investigation, just to show you how the kind of adventure game part works out more. Since you are a detective of sorts, so... Show you the detective -ry. It involves interviews and collecting information. Hi, Samantha. Hi, other Samantha. Hey, John. Let's call a cab. To go to the Morgu. So yeah, this is the weird... You see a cutscene for the cab coming to you. You might think I'm going there right now and I'm in the cab and it's automatic. No, you're watching the cutscene of the cab coming to you. As far as I can tell, you can't skip it either. There we go, thank you. And then you watch a cutscene of you actually going to the place. Very strange. Alright, there's the Morgu. And there's the, uh, delightfully unreadable font once again. Moryuku. Looks like a Y and a Q, kind of. Ugh.
visions of something horrible. Can I help you, sir? I'm investigating agent Kale669. I'd like to see Meditech Yudin, please. Meditech Yudin is in the crematorium. It's the door to your left. Most excellent, thank you. This looks like a temple. Also, I see many exposed flames. That seems dangerous. Hello, Meditech Yudin. I've come for the result of the autopsies. In all my career as a Meditech coroner, it's the first time I see bodies in such a state. They were ripped to pieces, probably by teeth or claws. Parts of them were even devoured, eaten raw. Oh, right, enter. Did you learn anything about the murderer? The murderer has supernatural strength and is capable of inhuman savagery. But he's no fool. He didn't leave a single trace for us to pick up on. It's as if he's literally disappeared. Was death instantaneous? No. That's probably the most horrible part. The murderer seems to have enjoyed making the victims suffer without killing them. Tell me about the state the bodies were in. The wounds look like they were inflicted by a wild animal, except for the fact that the victims were destroyed systematically and mercilessly. What was the exact cause of death? The cause of death is always the same. Heart attack. The suffering was so great that in the end, the heart couldn't take it. Did you notice anything unusual about the bodies? Yes. The eyes were always open and rolled back. It looks as if the life force was literally drained out of the poor unfortunates. I'd like to examine one of the bodies. I've just finished my autopsy on the last body. You can examine it if you feel you can stomach the sight. Thank you for your help, Meditech Yudin. So again, the detail in the faces and the facial expressions and all that stuff is surprisingly detailed, especially for 1999, and the voice acting is actually quite good. Is this where I need to go? Oh, this is one of the places I can go. Okay. So, because I'm a dick who poisons random people, I'm just going to take the scalpel. Thank you. Sorry, it's not a scalpel, it's a surgical instrument. Ugh. The corpse from the vision. No wonder it looked familiar. The tag says it's Maya 121, the murder victim mentioned in Kale's last report. God, that looks freaking nasty. Your entire stomach has just been torn open. Her face and horrible lacerations everywhere. There seems to be something under one of the nails of the left hand. Impossible to disengage it. Okay, so you can use the surgical instrument to get it out. I've done it, I've managed to extract something. Yay, something. Hurrah for something. Corpse sample. A kind of scale covered with dried blood. Wonderful. Let's grab my pyramid healing kits. Yunk. Probably don't have room for this one, but let's try it anyway. No, I do. Cool. <laughs> yeah, there's the surgery bot. Which is automatically examining the body and cutting it open. Ugh. Alright, actually, before doing that thing, let's analyze this sample. So this is a... An analyzer of organic samples. Appropriately titled. So let's put in my corpse sample. This is the analyzer's report. Sample analysis. Organic tissue. No DNA. Molecular structure unknown. Conclusion. Organic tissue from a non-human being. Demons. Alright, so I need to check out 
Den's body. Alright, Den is number four. Let's get that out. Den's body is in a bad state. His sneak is damaged and lying beside his arm. Den's sneak, out of order. Alright, my sneak is full. Well, in that case, let's uselessly, pointlessly use a medkit. There we go. <laughs> you try to examine the body any further, and he just says, What? There's no reason to do that. Okay. More visions. What's the connection with Den? Strange thing I discovered, by the way. So there's other bodies here you can take out. I can take out, for example, number two. A person with a name I can't pronounce, so let's select someone else whose name I can pronounce. I can't really pronounce that one either. Let's select number five. Karisha. You can take out other bodies. And this is one of the strange things about... I suppose it's more of the early games of Quantic Dream, I think. I don't think they really did this in Heavy Rain or On, but there's this strange gamification, I suppose you could say. There's a strange sense of gaminess to games that otherwise try to be very cinematic and serious. Because, I mean, Quantic Dream, they take their games very seriously. Very seriously. They want to make cinematic things. They want to make things with deep, complex stories and deep characters. They've always taken their games very seriously, but some of their early games have some strange gaminess. For example, I remember in Indigo Prophecy, which is, again, a very serious game, or at least it tries to be, but there's actually collectible floating cards. Gigantic collectible floating cards that you can find in Indigo Prophecy. So you'll open up, like, a desk drawer, for example, and this huge floating card will pop up and you can collect it for points. Literally, points that you're collecting in this otherwise serious cinematic game that you can then redeem for bonus things, you know, uh, concept art and stuff like that. And this game kind of has it too, although not to that degree so far. I haven't found any collectibles, however. Look, I mean, these are bodies that I'm pulling out of the freezer, right? I'm pulling out bodies of people I don't even know. I'm kind of disrespecting the dead a bit here. But I discovered that if you pull out these bodies and examine them, you can actually find at least one extra item. Like, you can find some money or something. It's not this one, but one of the other bodies has it. This is a game that otherwise takes itself very seriously, but you can kind of disrespect the dead and pull out the body of a random person you don't know, search it, and take some money. It's really bizarre. So completely at odds with the otherwise seriousness that it tries to portray. Very strange. Okay. Well, that ends my investigation here. Let's get the heck out of here. So the next part of my... quest, I believe, is to... yeah. A certain Anissa 109, a dancer at uh, 9010 Kalasar Boulevard, is reported to have seen something when Maya 121 was killed. So the next part is to interview her. I'm not going to do that, though. I think this shows you a pretty good view of what's going on. Let me show you something else I'm using, by the way. Let me call a cab. Uh, call a slider. Let's call a slider. This time I didn't ask it to take me anywhere specific, I just called it. These things actually have a manual control mode, and it's brilliant. Alright, see automatic on the left? Let's go to manual. Oh yeah, you get to drive it. And it makes like no sound at all. And you cannot run over anybody. You can't even drive it off the road. This is like a vague noise. Let's get into some traffic. Oh, excuse, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. It's the strangest thing. It's really weird. I don't even know why they put this in here. I guess it kind of gives you a sense of freedom, but it's just so awkward. They didn't implement any sort of a damage system with other things, so they just made you awkwardly kind of clip through it. And you just get to ride amongst the clones. Hi, John. Hi, John. 
Hi, John. Look at all these Johns. It's really bizarre. And yeah, that pretty much sums up the game. It's really freaking strange. It's got three distinct genres, each with its own awkward set of controls. And you have to switch between them, and it's really strange and uncomfortable. It's got a soundtrack by David Bowie, apparently. At least some of it is by David Bowie. I don't know if all of it is. It's got strange writing. People that, uh, I mean, writing that just frankly isn't that good. People react to you in a bizarre way, and you do really silly stuff like poison your captain. And nobody seems to care. It's just really strange. I do find it very charming, though. It's so strange, I kind of want to just keep playing it. It's just, it's so weird. I really like Quantic Dream as a company. I'm always fascinated to see what they come up with, because they spend so long, typically, in kind of hibernation. I suppose they've been releasing games faster. I, I don't think the time between Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls was too long, was it? When did Heavy Rain come out? I don't know. It definitely wasn't more than four years, though, was it? No. But they tend to kind of just kind of go into hibernation and then come out with something even stranger than the last thing they made. They're a strange company. They make unique things that are often broken. And that's kind of why I love them. Because it's actually refreshing. As much as their extreme devotion to cinematicness and bizarre controls often results in awkward games that don't exactly play to the strengths of the medium sometimes, often opting, opting to take away control rather than give it, although they've certainly improved in that respect. I mean, if you just look at Indigo Prophecy compared to Heavy Rain, they improved massively with Heavy Rain in terms of how much control you have over what you can do. And just in terms of the writing, too, even though Heavy Rain unfortunately went off the rails and really was... Well, I mean, their games try to be cinematic, right? They try to be these huge epic stories. So when you're trying to be a huge epic story and you're incredibly devoted to cinematicness, you really need to have a good story, and that's kind of been one of the big things that have been lacking in their games, I think. Indigo Prophecy had a terrible story. It started out great, but then really quickly went off the rails and then became batshit insane. Heavy Rain kind of did the same thing, but it was much more mild. Heavy Rain was much more grounded, much better written, although it still wasn't well written, I think. So their games are weird, but they're always fascinating to watch. They're refreshing compared to the often huge amount of just boring AAA games that come out. Because their games are always unique. Even if they are very often awkward. Alright, so that has been a look at Omicron, the Nomad Soul. It is available on GOG.com, which is where I got my copy, so I'll have a link in the description to where you can check that out. Thank you for watching.